The tropical Pacific Ocean continuing to spray a fire hose of moisture up into North America. Today, Texas and the Western Gulf under the moisture plume. The world's hotspot once again, Paraburdu in northwestern Australia, 114 degrees. That, of course, is a mining town in the Australian outback. And the cold spot, well, once again, that's going to be Dalyunk here on the Magadan Yakutsk Highway. It's not even a town, it's an automated station used for river gauge measurements. Well, here's what we got going on in the U.S. A pattern change as a large mass of cold air spreads into the Great Plains. That's centered in Montana and Wyoming with a 1040 millibar high and a front extending all the way down to Texas, Tennessee, and Virginia. And along that boundary, we have this fast-moving disturbance bringing a mix of rain and snow to the Ohio River Valley into Virginia and Maryland. And on the west coast, things going downhill once again. A new occluded system coming on shore in northwestern California and Oregon, and this is going to have a major impact on the weather on the west coast this weekend and early next week. Here is a better look at that situation. There's the occlusion off of the west coast and the triple point lurking a little bit further to the southwest. And the next system that's going to affect the west coast on Monday and Tuesday that's it right there, a compact, intense system moving to the east and heading right for California. For today, though, we've got a snowstorm in the northeastern U.S. And if we look at the visible satellite imagery, we see a few important things going on. Up to the north, Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan, potent cold air advection. And further to the south, closer to the surface low, convective elements and a comma head. That's where we have that frontogenetic forcing. We've got snow coming down from Columbus to Indianapolis and down into southern Illinois. The radar shows a classic signature of a compact, fast-moving winter storm. Up to the north, there's that snow from Columbus up to Indianapolis and over to southern Illinois. And further south, deep convection. That's closer to the warm air mass. And I've also added the Ghost GLM Lightning product. That's going to be those marks that you see right here, the positive symbols, showing a very electrically active cumulonimbus regime through the Fort Campbell area up to Lexington. The Storm Prediction Center not particularly concerned about that. We've got a marginal risk around Memphis to Little Rock. That's way down on the tail end of this weather system. If we take a look at the mesoscale discussions, there is... Actually, more concern over snow. That's going to be right there along that Interstate 70 area. There's some of the dynamics that they're outlining, basically from just south of Indianapolis to about St. Louis. And there's the discussion right there talking about some of those locally heavy snowfall clusters. The best way to track the heavier dynamics is with the water vapor imagery, and that shows some of the stronger lift in eastern Indiana, moving into Ohio as we record this. And as we go into the evening, that'll be moving into the Appalachian region. If we look at the 500 millibar heights and vorticity, we can see that advection lobe right there, driving a lot of that heavier precip. This is going to be around midday. By evening, there it is, moving into Indiana and Ohio, and then heading into the Appalachians overnight. Here's the Q vectors showing some of the stronger lift, starting out around St. Louis around midday, heading into the upper Ohio River Valley by evening, and then into the Appalachians around midnight. And here's the total projected snowfalls through tomorrow night from the National Digital Forecast Database. So this is not model data. This is actually forecast by humans. And we're looking at about maybe three to four inches through that swath that we talked about. And of course, when we get the orographics, heavier amounts in the Appalachians. And then when it spills out to the east into New York City, Philadelphia, looking at about three to four inches. And we've got winter storm warnings in effect in Maryland, southern Pennsylvania, and northern Virginia. And of course, we need to take a look at those surface plots 
we see that the richest moisture and temperatures coming up into southern Kentucky, 65 there at Nashville, 59 at uh, whatever station that is. But there's low pressure right there in the southern part of Kentucky. Cold front extending down that line of convection about like that. And the warm front, that is going to roughly go about like this. So most of this precipitation occurring to the north of the frontal boundaries. And up there in the corner, there's that winter storm warning in effect for tonight into tomorrow. The southeastern U.S. looking pretty good, but definitely under the influence of that subtropical jet. That's it right there, and that's going to really crank up the winds in the eastern U.S. as we go into Sunday. We are talking about the upper-level winds, and we'll take a look at that shortly. No problems in the southern plains. However, we do have a strong front moving through Texas, running about like this, connecting back up into Kentucky, and we've got cold air advection through Oklahoma, through the Ozarks, but really not a whole lot of precipitation. However, as we go further north, up the frontal boundary, yes, we do pick up some wintry conditions there in Wyoming, even some convective elements right there. And that is producing some heavy snow in that part of the Rockies. Winter storm warnings posted through southern Wyoming, the Front Range, the Medicine Bow Mountains, and the Sierra Madres. Not very much being carried further south into Colorado, they're mostly hitting the higher terrain above 9,000 feet with a winter weather advisory. Further to the northeast, cold, dry air surging through Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, South Dakota. Even though it's dry, it is lifting some loose snow and producing some locally restricted visibilities. The southwestern U.S. fair skies from the Continental Divide back to Nevada, but as we head out to the west coast, conditions are going downhill once again. Large occluded system offshore, and if we go to the water vapor imagery, let me pull that up, you can see the atmospheric river heading right there into California. Fortunately, not as much moisture as what we had back on the 3rd and 4th, but this will definitely have an impact over the weekend, and it's going to be a one-two punch with another even stronger system coming in for Monday and Tuesday. We'll look at that shortly. What I do want to show you, though, is the precipitable water. You can see one-inch amounts offshore. Now, this is mostly heading to the north, but the tail end is going to filter into California. Let's go into this evening and overnight and tomorrow, and you can see those one-inch amounts start to make their way into the Bay Area with about three-quarters of an inch in the San Joaquin Valley. And that heads down the coast, affecting the Santa Barbara, Los Angeles area for Sunday. And here comes the next shot coming inland for late Sunday and Monday. And that will be an even stronger system and longer-lived because there's a significant amount of moisture that's wrapped up and it's going to take a while to get that dry slot coming in. That's not really going to happen until around Thursday. There's a look at the National Digital Forecast Database total precipitation through Monday. And this does not extend into Tuesday and Wednesday. So this is only part of the picture. But you can see widespread 2 to 3 inch amounts, about 2 inches at Sacramento, almost 2 inches in the Bay Area, and 2 inches around Santa Barbara. And then it tapers off to maybe about half an inch in the eastern Los Angeles area. Snowfall totals, those will be mostly above five to 6,000. Again, this is only through late Monday. But you can see in the Sierra Nevada range, quite a bit of new snow up to about 30 to 40 inches. And that extends all the way up towards Lassen Peak and into the Mount Shasta area. In the northwestern U.S., surprisingly fair skies across much of the interior. There's that occlusion offshore, the east side of Portland, under a wind advisory for Saturday for canyon winds coming down through the Columbia River, gusting up to 50 miles an hour, mostly east of I-205. And we've got high wind warnings in the foothills east of Seattle-Tacoma into tomorrow morning for east winds gusting to 60 miles an hour. 
And just a quick check up there in Alaska and Canada, under the influence of a cutoff high, which is causing very warm conditions in northern British Columbia, and a subsequent inversion. We do have extreme cold warnings for western James Bay and the Hudson Bay region along the Ontario coast for Saturday due to wind chills down to minus 45 Celsius. And this is a big thermal ridge. That's all a large mass of cold air. And further to the east, winter storm warnings for the Newfoundland coast. Let's take a look out there in the Atlantic region. Well, most of the storm systems are out to sea now, just getting that northwesterly flow along the coast. Quick look out there in Europe. Well, we've got ridging across France and the UK. There's another inbound system heading for the British Isles and looks a little bit stormy and rainy up there in Finland and Sweden. A quick check of the 500 millibar chart for the continent this evening does show a well-developed Omega block in western Canada today. That's that cutoff high producing the very mild weather in western Canada. However, it is being undercut by this strong polar front jet heading into California and we'll see that block breaking down the ridge tomorrow. The combination of this strong upper level high and this Hudson Bay low producing a strong fetch of northerly flow coming down from the Northwest Territories. Then as we go into next week, you can follow the changes going on. What we'll basically see here is a breakdown of this high amplitude pattern and a conversion to a high zonal index pattern and will become increasingly under the influence of this west to east Pacific flow going into midweek and later next week. And you can see these disturbances making their way across the U.S. basically heading eastward, very fast moving. And as we get to the weekend, a big change for Ontario, Quebec, and the northeastern U.S. as the Hudson Bay low detaches and moves into the northeastern states as a weak polar vortex event. So let's go ahead and take a look at that overnight forecast. We see that snow spreading up towards Philadelphia and New York. Meanwhile, in Colorado, that fast-moving disturbance moves through Denver, Colorado Springs, but it weakens as it moves into the Panhandle. Nevertheless, strong northerly flow opening up. We're going to see that air mass surge south through the Gulf Coast region over the weekend, but not before this moisture gets involved out there in Florida. Some heavy rain coming up for Sunday in the Florida Peninsula. And we bring this on into Sunday. You can see that rain developing in that part of the country. Much drier air filtering into the southern U.S. Meanwhile, over the northeastern states, very intense upper-level flow. There you go. Check out that 250 millibar chart for Sunday morning. Looking at 230 knots out there south of Connecticut. That's going to be 265 miles an hour. That's some of the highest winds I've ever seen on an upper air chart. Also on Sunday, we're going to see that atmospheric river heading into Florida. There it is, getting two-inch amounts over Miami later during the day on Sunday. So definitely some very high precipitation efficiencies going on there before the system finally clears out on Monday. And I did want to bring this back to Saturday because there is weather going on in the western U.S. as well. There it is, triple point heading into the San Francisco area and post-frontal and a front type rain all through the San Joaquin Valley, northern and central California. And you can see the next shot coming in for late Sunday into Monday. Very similar situation, but this will be hanging around at least two or three days. And this is how things progress through the work week. Remains quite stormy out there in California. A series of disturbances affects that region through early Wednesday. As we continue forward, the Great Plains gets active, not seeing a whole lot of precipitation with the system. Most of the precip remains north of the triple point. However, as we go into Thursday and Friday, a large chunk of cold air coming down into the Midwest and northeastern states. And as we mentioned, that will be accompanied by a polar vortex, part of the Hudson Bay low, which has broken off and moved into the northeastern states. So that'll give us a few days of very cold weather and 
lots of snow showers in that part of the country. Out in the central and western U.S., no big changes on the horizon and a rather nondescript close to the end of February. And that will do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our newest Patreon supporters, Rob Strecker and Jonathan. That kind of support helps keep the program going, and hopefully in the months ahead we'll be able to add another day to the weekly lineup. At least that's my plan. We'll see how things go. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care, and we will see you on Monday for the supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. Have a great one. Bye-bye.